everybody welcome back Jiu-Jitsu 2000 here I have a few items laid on on my bench in front of you I've got six inches of cotton yarn about 12 inches of copper number 12 electrical wire uh, you can use you can use snare wire out of your survival kit you can use bailing wire uh, paper clip anything like that okay but you need some sort of wire I have a small finish nail and a pair of needle nose and here I have a container this happens to be a small mason jar uh, doesn't does not have to have a lid um, but if it does it's it's fine but you need some sort of container to put your oil in what we're gonna make today is we're gonna make an oil lantern okay first thing I need to do in the process is I need to make a wick holder and I'm gonna use this wire to do it this nail has nothing to do with the actual finished product this just helps us get the thing done if you're in a wilderness survival situation you can use a matchstick you can use a piece of wood anything like that but you just need something to wrap your wire around Okay, because we need to make some coils. Okay, bear with me. I know the, the shot isn't that good, but just need to make a few coils around something. And I'm just happen to be using a finish nail here. Okay, when you get your coils made, you need to bring them together. They don't need to be separated. So I'm going to get my needle nose here and just kind of bring the coils together. This step can be a little bit cumbersome. It's not that big of a deal though. It's more slipping off here. So you need to bring them together. There we go there now it's starting to look good so you need at least three coils I would recommend doesn't have to be anything crazy okay now go ahead and take your nail out and you'll have a piece that looks like this go ahead and use your cutters and kinda of trim the top up a little bit so it looks nice and clean and again, kind of mash them together. Make sure it looks good. So this is the start of our wick holder. The next step in the process is to take our jar and place our wick holder so that it's going to be right in the middle of the jar. And make a mark, you know, just like I'm holding my fingers my thumb is being held where I'm gonna need to bend the wick holder so I'm basically gonna have the wick sitting there and where my thumb is I'm gonna make a 90 degree bend up something like this and what's gonna happen what my goal is is to have my wick holder sit down into the jar and hold the wick in the center You see that that's my objective okay from here I want to double this thing down just like so so I have a wick holder that looks like this now it's important that from this flat area your coils go upward and not downward so the coils aren't going like down like this they're going up that's important so from here I'm just kind of messing around with this wire trying to form it to get it to where it's gonna fit in the in the middle real nice now the next thing I want to do is I want to measure the height of what I'm anticipating my oil to be and I want to bend the thing backwards approximately that height and I like to go about a third of the way up as far as my oil height so I'm going to hold that wick holder about a third of the way up and I'm just going to bend this thing back. So I have something 
that looks like this. Now obviously you can see that my wick holder is not in the center so using my needle nose I'm just going to kind of bend that thing very mildly. Now you see it's held very nice in the center of the jar. One more thing that I want to do very quickly is I want to spin this around and I need to make a little handle here where I can grab this because right now it's hard to get a hold of this. So I'm going to pull that out and just take my needle nose and bend a little handle right there. Okay, and then put it back in. Make sure that everything's still lined up and where it needs to be. And it sometimes it'll change things a little bit. You'll have to bend it back and get it where it needs to go. But in our case, it looks good. Okay? So you can see we still have our wick holder in the middle. Everything looks good. Okay, at this point, I'm going to take the wick holder out and I'm going to take the actual wick itself and I'm going to thread it from the bottom up into the wick holder. Just going to stick it through the hole all the way up just like that want to make sure that this is only about an eighth of an inch long then I'm going to set it back in the jar okay at this point I'm going to go ahead and pour some oil in here now the oil that I'm going to be using today is just old vegetable oil and as I pour the oil in I want to make a note here for you you want to pour the oil to the level of the bottom of this wick holder this line because those coils need to be above the oil level so there's my oil everything looks good let's go ahead and light it now and while I'm lighting it, I want to talk a little bit about the types of oils that you can use. Okay, now obviously we're using vegetable oil here today. This is a good oil. You can also use olive oil. That works real good. You can use cottonseed oil, and you can find that generally in like cans of oysters and stuff like that that's a very good oil to burn you can use lamp oil like for your outdoor lamps and stuff citronella oil works good you can also use bacon grease but from my experience and my opinion is the oils that are a liquid form work the best you know so like bacon grease would work in a pinch but it's not my number one choice um, and when it comes to the liquid formed oils like lamp oils versus cooking oils I tend to like to use cooking oils because they don't have as high of a flash point as lamp oils do so like say maybe I'm carrying this around and I drop it and it goes all over the floor if there's a flame anywhere around there and it's lamp oil there's a chance that that thing could catch on fire you know but if I'm using olive oil or something like that or vegetable oil it's just gonna make a mess and I can clean it up so that's my um, my take on fuels now I'm gonna go ahead and start dimming these lights so that you can see what it looks like without a bunch of light So let's go ahead and take a look. Does a good job. My wick is long enough. You see it's coiled around in there. These things burn for hours. They do an excellent job. They're fun to make and they're really good in a survival situation. Now let's take a brief moment and let me talk about how to extinguish it. It's very simple. If you have a pretty good amount of oil in there, 
you can just lift this and drop it in and then put your lid on and you're good to go but if you don't want to extinguish it that way let me push this wick up a little bit and I'm gonna relight it bear with me if your oil level was lower and you tried to use that method and it didn't want to work then you have another method of you know dropping that in like like I showed but suppose it didn't go out then all you have to do is is uh, put the lid on it and it'll take the oxygen away it's not very dark yet but I have that little lantern sitting in the tree it's kinda of windy right now so that little flame has been threatening to go out but it's stayed lit the whole time I'll tune back in a little later when it's a little darker okay everybody here's the lantern that I showed you how to make earlier I thought I'd come out to the woods get away for a little while and share with you what this looks like so that's it it got a little windy earlier and I kinda thought that the flame was gonna go out but it never went out and it's been burning probably two or three hours I've been out here quite a while puts out a little bit of light it's not real dark yet it's starting to get dark but you're starting to see the lantern shine a little more the darker it gets but anyway I just thought that I'd share this with you hope you liked the video hope you found some good useful information and again I want to say thanks for watching everybody feel free to comment feel free to subscribe have a beautiful evening we'll talk to you next time have a good night bye bye